what are Switzerland's priorities in its engagement in agriculture, rural development and food systems? Food systems are vastly complex. Uh, so we at STC have tried to narrow down our field of operations uh, to a smaller number of interrelated areas that as you want to, can, are actually manageable um, and still really uh, represent uh, Switzerland's uh, core added value. These are uh, health and nutrition, uh, inclusive market systems and agroecological food production. And in the, I think in this respect, we seek to link uh, consumption and production through inclusion of the private sector. Um, we case this in a context of enhanced uh, global governance in order to ensure that we're taking uh, the big picture into account. We are linking our uh, work with the, the kind of global dialogues that we have um, and of course um, also stay in conversation with the priorities of our partners and uh, co-donors. Just to, yeah, to mention some of the uh, organisations or mechanisms we're working with, we have for instance the Sun Donors Network, the Transformative Partnership Platform or TPP uh, on Agroecology uh, in which we work closely with the EU and France or Amongst the various coalitions of the UNFSS, uh, we're engaged in the one on agroecology and the one on healthy diets from sustainable food systems. Against the backdrop of multiple global crises, how do we as donors balance the need to increase resilience in rural populations while making sure emergencies also receive sufficient support? And what is Switzerland doing in this regard? It is incumbent upon us to uh, provide humanitarian assistance that saves lives um, and averts suffering in the short term. But uh, we also have to continue to think how what the long term solutions are. SEC recently underwent an institutional reorganisation with the goal of setting the humanitarian development peace nexus more centre stage and uh, tying this approach to some of the other strengths we have, such as the decentralization of funds to enable rapid resource mobilization and also um, link-ins with our partners. Um, in other words, um, we have to keep our instruments as flexible as possible. This is something we try to do um, in order to um, respond to situations as they develop. Uh, and this means placing funding decisions as close to uh, the recipient populations as possible. That means that um, our country offices have a lot of uh, autonomy in the way they, they uh, place funding amongst organisations or how they initiate programmes uh, and projects. And of course Switzerland uh, works very closely with the UN agencies uh, for emergency assistance but we also make sure that we do not relent on the longer term solutions uh, we see the private sector as an important source of innovation and in finance for transforming food systems. Bruce, what do you see are the emerging opportunities and challenges uh, in the future of food systems? What do you think it truly takes to change a, the paradigm shift uh, in how donors look at food systems and in particular uh, in financing for development for assistance? Food systems are still very poorly understood and systemic thinking is often not practiced, even institutionally. The trade-offs and choices that come with a systems approach do not necessarily come naturally to the individual uh, actor. Uh, another challenge is that uh, systemic fields are often segregated and the interfaces and specialists do not really have the common vocabulary or resources to communicate effectively with one another. With a food systems approach, we have the opportunity to link these people up around a common discipline and literally put food on the table. We are working on bringing the fields of biodiversity, nutrition and health, among others, uh, together because they're all related to food systems in their own way. Now we have to recognise uh, the importance of individuals and the private sector in bringing these to fruition because without their buy-in, any transformation process would probably falter ultimately. This means uh, providing startup capital and creating, uh, I think, best of all, time-bound de-risking mechanisms as incentives. Uh, we have 
to uh, experiment with innovative solutions, more than half of our projects engage very directly with markets. Um, and there's a view here to leveraging the private sector for food system transformation. Agroecology brings together the concerns of economic and environmental sustainability and links these to social well-being, but it also upholds the importance of participatory solutions and human rights. Modern agroecology very much seeks to harness te uh, technology and scientific know-how and is a strong proponent of agroecology, so it seeks to um, even the path for the private sector to embrace agroecological methods uh, and flourish. What is the biggest value you see in the donor platform for the donor community? And as it approaches its 20th anniversary this year in 2023, how do we keep the platform useful to its members? GDPRD members have a relatively large common denominator. Uh, I say this in terms of values or reviews and objectives. Uh, this common point of departure makes it possible to work productively on conceptual approaches in a less politicised way than in the larger multilateral mechanisms. The GDPRD can make a very real contribution being more concrete about what food systems transformation actually means. There are, of course, a number of other coordination mechanisms out there. Now, although they were all created for slightly different purposes at different times and circumstances, there is a danger of overlap and redundancy and all that. So what is important is that the GDPRD continues to concentrate on its core strengths, such as the semi-informed space uh, for donor discussion and in order to test ideas before they're taken into uh, the larger fora, Bruce, you have an, an extensive and interesting background in rural engineering, international cooperation, and conflict transformation. Now, from your perspective, what gives you hope for this year ahead? The last few years have been very, very difficult for many people across the world. Recent years have demonstrated just how fragile political, environmental, and economic systems are, and that we have to really take care of them. On the more positive side, these developments have focused minds and policymakers, uh, and I think many are more aware than ever before about just what we're up against, and what the stakes are, and how important it is for us to work together and reach clear results. We can build on momentum that's already there towards more positive change. That is, as long as we are prepared to uphold uh, positive values such as humanity, human rights, uh, and pursue sustainable, sustainable development. That means keeping ideology at bay and working pragmatically on the small incremental solutions.